you had a vision of Skittles, the candy? Yes, yeah, Skittles was my favorite candy growing up. So it, it only stands the reason God would use that to speak to me. It was literally raining Skittles candy out of the sky. And Jesus coming to earth and dying on the cross for our sins, yeah. It's not enough. That's not enough. You need a vision of Skittles. This is right now. <laughs> there she right goes. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Hit, Hit the, the Bar. Bar. I'm Steve Kozar. I'm Paulette Kozar, and we've got Lucy Kozar right here, front and center. Oh, yeah, she's excited. <laughs> oh, she's ex She ate, so now she's all ready to go to sleep. Hi. She's only really active when she wants to eat. You know, and speaking of eating, honey. Yes. You know, Skittles are really prophetic. Skittles are... Um, delicious food. Eat them, them every, every day. day. <laughs> no, it's candy is delicious candy. food, yeah. Ridiculous favor... Uh, is that what this whole thing is about tonight? Ridiculous favor and miraculous provision are what we're talking about tonight. All right. Hey, and shout out. Shout out to all of our campuses all over the world. Hey, you guys are awesome. Yeah. How y'all doing out there? We know you're out there. We love you. We're crazy about you. We're so excited about what God's doing in all of your lives. All of you. Yeah. Thank you for uh, being with us tonight. We're trying different chairs every time we do this. It's still not right. It's close enough. Yeah, we're only in our house, so whatever. Welcome to our living room. Hello. We're going to talk about Skittles from Heaven. It was literally raining Skittles candy out of the sky. Yes. I couldn't believe that this was still... Um, Alive and active on yeah. Sid Roth's I, channel. I, you know, because I did a video just recently about how he dumped a lot of videos. That's true. And I don't keep track of this stuff enough to know exactly what they got rid of. It was mostly the things about Trump. You know, mm -hmm. he, he's going to win. He right. has to win. Even he's though he hasn't won, he's still the president. Wait till the inauguration day. Oh, yeah. Inauguration day. It's going to be shown. And then after uh, the inauguration day. How about the next You know, the inauguration months? day doesn't really mean anything. No, not in God's timeline. <laughs> they took down a bunch of stuff, but they kept up the Skittles one. The Skittles man. This is. This is the Skittle man. The Skittle man, who is a fake doctor. As far as I can tell, he has no actual degree to call himself a doctor. But you know what? On Sid Roth. Who really needs one? Nah, you just call yourself a doctor and Sid Roth just goes along with you. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, so Dr. Michael Brown, who is an actual doctor, yeah. doesn't seem to mind. Nope. He's, he thinks that's fine or right. he's not aware of it. Or he doesn't want to be aware of it. I don't understand how that's possible. This is what you do when you're a fraud, when you're a con artist, when you're a cheat, when you're a liar. You pretend to be a doctor. You let people call you doctor. You use the name doctor in front of your name when you're not actually a doctor. Or you're very delusional. And you think it's okay. I, I don't even know if anybody could ever think it's okay. I mean... If you believe enough things that aren't true, maybe. So, anyway. let's, let's back this up. And we're going to see... Back it up. <laughs> back it up. And we're just going to see how far we can get into this. Oh, it's it's 24 minutes. So what is this program called? It's called Hit the Bar because we hit the space bar because we stop it over and over again. Hey, and I'll put a link to the actual mm -hmm. episode if you don't want to hear us because we interrupt too much. And, well, that's what we do. We interrupt each other and talk through yeah. whatever this person is saying. But you can watch the whole thing first, and then you can come back and watch our, our commentaries. Our commentary. Yes. Yeah, but I'm going to tell you right away, it's really bad. It's really yeah. dumb. Right. But here we go. Okay. Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome. By the way, this is filmed in a hotel uh, banquet room. Why? Because he's probably saving money on having to build a studio. So there's no studio. Is it always in the same banquet room, or is it changed every I'm not, now and I'm then? not sure about that. Because it really looks like a studio. If you look in the background sometimes, you see those fake rocks, you know, the fake stone walls to make it look like he's in ancient, you know, Jerusalem or something. And you'll see, like, a camera just sticking through the fabric and stuff. <laughs> it's really cheesy to my world where it's naturally supernatural my guest says it's normal to experience miracles hmm. every day ready to be normal <laughs> ready i'm never ready for sid roth I'm sid roth here with keenan bridges and uh Kenan. dr bridges Kenan. and i've been friends doctor. for a long time long time but friends you have moved into a new zone yes. in the spirit. Yes, I have. I mean, I could see it when you were doing some recording for yes. us yesterday. It's, uh, how long has this been happening? You know, it's been happening, I would say, within the last year. The Lord has kind of just infused me with a new level of glory. Mm. Can believers walk in miracles daily? Yeah, you know, it's, it's interesting, Sid. The, the reality is this. Not only can we walk in miracles daily, but what if I told people that it was our inheritance that we do? 
Not mm. only that, but in these days to come, Sid, we must walk in miracles. And so Okay, the great irony here is this came out in May of 2020. Oh. So the coronavirus was already starting to be a huge deal. Right. In fact, some of the guys that he's affiliated with, they said that uh, something's going to happen at Passover. Something big is coming at Passover. You know, basically trying to say without being too specific that the coronavirus was going to be uh, on the way out. Oh, I see. By, um, you know, April. So mm -hmm. here it is, May. I don't know if this was filmed in May. A lot of times, you know, with TV, you film it and it doesn't come out for a couple of months. But but he should know if he's a prophetic person. Yeah, he's supposed to get, he claims to get all special these knowledge. special knowledge from mm -hmm. God. And he just said that miracles should be normal for all of us. Every day. So when the coronavirus happened, I would think that these guys would be really excited. They should be saying, yes, that's more people that we can have miraculous healings with every single day. And we can prove. Yeah, we could just bring our cameras with and we can right. just heal people over and over again. And then... Um, you know, the news people will follow us around and, you know, finally everyone will want to be a Christian because they'll see all these miracles. Right. That's a good point. Yeah, which didn't happen. Didn't happen. So God began to show me this thing of, of a church, a, a body of believers that are really releasing the presence of God all over the earth, as you call it, actually, the, the global glory. And I believe that the, the glory of the... This is what I remember hearing a lot in the charismatic church, which I still don't understand. The glory, we're going to release the glory of God. What does that mean? It's absolutely meaningless. Right. I don't know what that means. It's like the glory of God is sealed up in a mayonnaise jar. Right. And someone has to unscrew the lid. That's from a Johnny Carson reference, by the way. You remember that? No. When he had uh, Ed McMahon play yeah. the great Cornac or whatever. Yeah, whatever it was. And he would, these, these special secret messages have been sealed oh, yeah. in a mayonnaise jar on Funkin Wagnall's front porch yeah. with some weird little phrase he used to always use. They've been kept in a mayonnaise jar on fucking Wagnall's porch since noon today. No one knows the answers inside these envelopes. But you, in your mystical and borderline divine way. Anyway. That was a little extra thing you got there. No charge for that. Yeah. Johnny Carson reference. Yes. But my point is, is that I remember <laughs> hearing <laughs> the glory of God's going to be released. It's like when we look at references to the glory of God in the Old and New Testament, it's not what they're equating as the glory of God today. Well, if if it was the real glory of God, no one would have to point it out. It would be really obvious. Right. That's a good point. It would be actually, uh, especially as we see like with Moses, people mm -hmm. were terrified. Well, when, and, and it, it changed Moses' countenance. Right. He looked completely different. So to... To, number one, say that you know it's going to happen yeah. is really, um, at best, at best, it's presumptuous. Mm -hmm. I know what God's about to do. Mm -hmm. You know, the guy who created the entire universe. Right, he told me. Yeah, and I got inside scoop on God. Because I'm real special. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's actually blasphemous hmm. to, have, to, to be able to describe God in, in such detail as if you were this special person that, knew something about God that no one else knew. But if the glory of God really did, if, if it was something you could release, mm -hmm. it wouldn't be the glory of God. In other words, God is above us. Yeah. This is so obvious. And even to explain it, it's kind of... You need to. The, the glory of God is this, is, it's kind of like this all-encompassing idea of, of God's greatness being somehow now finally displayed. We live in a world now where, to a large extent, God's glory is not on display. Right. We see it in nature. We see it in the sky, in the sunsets, in the beauty that's in the, the natural world. And we have, a, we have a really true inkling about that, you know, like in the first chapter of Romans. We have a sense that there is a creator to mm -hmm. this beautiful creation. But that's about it. God's actual glory if God really did show up, literally, we would all be terrified. It would be so great. It would be so powerful. It would be so truly awesome. The most misused word of the last 30 years is probably awesome. Right. You know, dude, that car is awesome <laughs> is a misuse of the word awesome. It means that you're going... Words mean something. Yeah, right? exactly. You're going, oh, I'm in awe. I'm, yeah. I'm terrified. Not necessarily that you're terrified in the, in the only bad sense, but the, the actual glory of God would terrify us. It, it, if you were a Christian and a true believer, it wouldn't completely terrify you. But it would terrify you. That would be at least part of your feeling. Yeah. And I, I have one 
example that I've thought of, and this is just me, but when I go to the ocean mm -hmm. or even to Lake Michigan where you don't see the end of it, it just goes on and on and on and it's so gigantic. Yeah. That to me is awesome. And I actually have a sense of fear because I don't, I, we're not by the ocean all the time. Maybe if I was used to it, you know, but to me, and I think about how huge it is and how deep it is and really how you, you don't you know. You get what's lost. Up. Yeah. You can get lost and drown and killed and no one will ever find no you. No one will ever find you. That kind of sense of awesomeness about a large body of water is just a tiny fraction, of, fraction really of what it would be to actually to somehow see or sense the actual glory of God. Mm. So, yeah, they're minimizing it. They're actually trivializing the glory of God when they say stuff like this. The Lord is about to cover the earth like the waters cover the sea. I read that somewhere. Yeah, it's in the Bible. Something called this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's amazing. See, we're seeing it all over the world. Everywhere I go, everywhere I go where this message is coming across of the kingdom, people are seeing the most miraculous things take place in their lives. And the beauty of it is not just... It's not just people with titles and people that are authors or TV figures, but uh, mothers and teachers and, and people that work in regular fields of endeavor are seeing the miraculous explode in their lives. You had a vision of Skittles, the candy? Yes, yeah, Skittles was my favorite candy growing up. So it, it only stands the reason God would use that to speak to me. And in <laughs> it only stands to reason. Whose reason? <laughs> okay. I... I love Skittles. The, yeah, the way I've he, never been, uh, I never had a dream or a vision of Skittles. What what he just did there was he just jumped Leaped. through a couple of gigantic hoops yeah. and hoped that nobody noticed right. how ridiculous it is. Yeah. And and the the really sad thing that he just completely skipped is that God can only speak to you in a way that's personal to you because the Bible and Jesus coming to earth and dying on the cross for our sins. Yeah, it's pff, not enough. That's not enough. You need a vision of Skittles to really know what God's all about. That's really embarrassing. I mean, that's, that's, I mean, that's, what, that's what it humiliating. is. Humiliating. Yeah. So these people are not embarrassed. No. It's still up. This has got uh, 160,000 views since May of 2020. Wow. And if you read the comments, a lot of people think this is great. Okay. In this vision, it was just a beautiful field, just plush field and golden. And all of a sudden, <laughs> these Skittles begin to rain from heaven. All kinds of flavors, all kinds of colors. You were in heaven. I, that's heaven for me. <laughs> I, I know there are going to be Skittles in heaven. And, and as, as, as these Skittles began to fall, God began to speak to me because I wonder, what is this? And God said, this represents my ridiculous favor and my miraculous provision on... Oh, okay, God. Let him finish okay. on, on his body of believers all over the world. We're about to see an outpouring of favor like we've never seen it before, an outpouring of miraculous provision like we've never seen before. And God says that, that his children are going to taste his sweetness and his goodness. What do you mean? Like uh, Jesus coming and dying on the cross? Exactly isn't really that great and it's not that sweet the provision we, isn't there yeah you know our, our everything we've had ridiculous up to this point favor is not in jesus no we don't have ridiculous favor by the son of god coming and dying on behalf of sinners no right. that's set that aside what we need let's is, get personal <laughs> like i was i was listening to this as we were trying to figure out what to do for the show yeah. today and i remember just from the thing we did a month ago um, actually, less than a month ago, this was Sean, Bolts. the smartphone prophet, mm -hmm. on the Sid Roth show in the early 2000s. My imagination, it wasn't inside my head. I'm looking at a man, and before I could even take it too far, I was questioning, why is this man here? Who is this? All of a sudden, I heard the audible voice of the Lord fill the room, and it said, Welcome the Minister of Finance of the Kingdom. And I knew that this person, this angelic being, this spiritual being, was in charge of all of the finances and resources in the kingdom for Jesus to receive the fullness of his reward. So I knew that he was there to tell me about investing, like he was going to invest kingdom resources on the earth that would bring salvation and souls. So this is how it always goes. Hmm. Nobody comes right out, well, maybe Jesse Duplantis. <laughs> yeah. Jesse Duplantis comes right out and says, don't tell God that's right. What you need. Tell them what you want. You know, you like jewelry. I was talking to God the other day. Yeah, you like jewelry and yeah. luxury cars. Tell him. You want to have a you. mansion? That's what you don't waste your faith on regular stuff. Right. 
And he says that on the Sid Roth show, which will be another thing I'll use in okay. the video. But it makes all the difference, Sid, what God says and what God thinks. You see? So what do you want? Okay. Oh, gosh. Listen, don't, don't ask God for a need. What are you doing that for? That's a waste of spiritual energy. He said he'd supply how many need? How many need? What are, you, what are you wasting spiritual energy on need? Don't tell him what you need. Tell him what you want. Because when you get what you want, you destroy all your need. When you have what you want, you don't even think about need. I know what you're thinking. That's greed. No, no. That's growth. Okay, so this is, I think, 2004, maybe 2006 at the, at the latest. And he's saying the same exact thing. <clears throat> the Minister of Finance has now brought a yeah. message to him. Yeah. What I find interesting, all these different people who say that, you know, God told them about provision, God told them about money, finances. How come it's not all the same message? It's all different messages on things you have to do. Um, you know, you could be doing and, all of these things. And if they did come and say that this is now happening, yeah. like Sean Bolt said, well, why is this guy saying it's happening now here? Right. What is this now? How many years is that? I, oh, boy, I don't I, know. Six, seven, eight, nine. I, I'm no, this is, this is 12, more than that. 12, 14, 10. This is 2000 and I think, let's just say 2005. 2005. 15, that'd be, that'd be 10. 15, so 16, 17 years ago. Yeah, so we're talking. Wow. And, and people have said the same thing, you know, decades earlier than that. I'm just right. using that one as an example. So here's what you have to be a little bit skeptical about. Okay. Why do people who go on TV shows like this have the same message about I just heard from God or I heard from an angel and they said that you need to get a lot of money. You're about to get a lot of money. But wait, it's not just for you to have a lot of money, which we know you want. It's so that after you get a lot of money, you can win souls for the kingdom. You can do good things with your money. But In then fact, to know exactly all the details, you have to buy my book. Hang on. Hang on. I just thought of something else. Bethel TV. Here we go. All debt to be canceled. This is the authority of the Jubilee. This is God's will. God's will is not my will, it's not our will, it's His will for His people to be not uh, financially enslaved by, by no one else. Every seventh year, death gets canceled. The 40th, the 50th, the 50th is the Grand Jubilee. Woo! Land is returned. Uh, house is a return. If you don't have house, but you want to have a house, I think you should stand up too, because that is His will for you to have your own house. Come on, you already have a house. You are house. You are God's house. So if He who didn't spare anything to make you His house, how much more He could give you just a two by four, and sheet rock, and something else around. It's like ridiculous, it's nothing. So I just released right now all these lies from the pit of hell that you don't qualify in Jesus' name. I just break it over. So, so, so who is this person? This is Georgian Banov at Bethel Church. And what he, year? This was in 2000, and, well, actually the actual video was put up in 2016, but I believe he made this talk in 2011. Okay, so he's now, the, the, my favorite part is about chickens and souvenirs yeah. and shofars. Yeah, here we go. It's pretty intense. So it's like over you. Mission trips, we have India, we have everywhere. I'll just stand up if you want to go to a mission trip with us. I'll pray for you. And so he wants he wants all these young people to go on a mission trip with, with him. him. Yeah. To do lots of work. Whatever and I'm, that means. I, uh, I'm sure he's not making any profit on having people go with him on these trips. No. no. Money's going to come. Expect money to come even tonight. By the time you sit down, Somebody will tap you and say, I'm going to send you to go with Georgia. Because, like, this happens all the time. So get ready to receive right now supernatural funding. Are you ready? So, Father, right now, everyone that's standing is saying, Lord, send me. I want to go. And so, Lord, right now we receive the supernatural financings from heaven for the missions, Lord. Full, full payment and extra money for chicken and for lamb, and for shofars, and souvenirs. Lord, I just pray extra money to give to somebody else, like extra cash to come to somebody else to go. In Jesus' name. Okay. He wants chauffeurs. Chauffeurs? <laughs> chauffeurs and souvenirs. and souvenirs and chickens. <laughs> chauffeurs. You 
you know, and that's actually makes prayer a laughing stock of needs to be a laughing stock, really, of really and you've got people all over the world that are just just hanging by a thread. Yeah. Most people are. And we're not saying that you shouldn't pray and ask God for things that you truly need. Absolutely. Um, but the way they make light of it. Yes, that's that's what I'm like, trying to say. You know, God's up there saying, Look, I want to give you whatever you want. You but just have to pick the right thing. You gotta be expectant. Yeah, and pick you, the right thing that I want to give you. What well, is the, the right most, thing? The most outlandish thing that you want is, is right when thing. God says, okay, now I'm going to give you that. You, right. you wanted a Toyota Corolla, but you really should have asked for a Ferrari. Once yeah. you ask for the Ferrari, then I'm going to give you 10 Corollas and 100 Ferraris. It's this whole idea that you just don't have uh, enough faith enough faith for, to believe the, for greedy stuff, yeah. materialistic because stuff. Because God's big. And yeah. God wants to give you the biggest stuff. In that George and Banoff thing, and I didn't want to play too much because no. Bethel's really bad about copyright issues. Even though they're breaking the law, they literally are breaking the copyright wow. fair use laws. They will should we be surprised? They will hit uh, hit your videos with a copyright strike, even though we're using them properly. Okay. Um, but he does in that video say, "Don't ask for a three bedroom house. Yeah. Ask for a six bedroom house, so that when the when the um, missionaries come to town, you can give them a place to stay." Right. What a great way to encourage people to be materialistic and self-focused yeah. and to desire stuff. Yeah. Oh, it's not for me. Yeah, like you're going to have a missionary in that extra bedroom all year long. No, you're going to have a, a bedroom that people will use every once in a while. In the Even meantime, that, you get to have this giant mansion for yourself. Right. So and we've heard all this stuff before. You'll put a link down if people want to see the rest of Banoff's If I remember. Yeah. Talk. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Okay, let's listen to the rest of this doctor. Like we've never experienced in our lives, so we need to get Fake ready. Fake doctor. Fake doctor. And Sid, this is the beauty of all of what I'm talking about. This is not just for me. It's not just for you. It's for every person under the sound of my voice right now. It's for those watching us. And I believe if we will come into agreement that God is saying to his people, there's no more excuses. There's no more limitations. In fact, I want to read this word that the Lord gave to me. and I want to So he's not going to read from the Bible. He's going to read from... <laughs> Is the word his, that the his Lord Bible. gave. Yeah. yeah. Lord now, gave this him. is almost, well, it's it's over a year and a half ago. Okay. February, March, April, May. It's, in four months, this will ha this will be two years ago. So my question is, Sid Roth, why don't you have a show now? A follow-up. Follow-up. Right. He's claiming this stuff is happening. So let's let's look at the big picture then. How, how has that happened? How has that come forth? How has these words, or how have the words... Come to fruition? They, they come ignore to pass? it. They'll just come on with a new word yeah, from no a new one, guy. No one talks about it. I'll read it quickly uh, for our, our audience. This is what the Lord woke me up and he said to me. He says, I've called you into intimacy. I've called you to look into me and see. See my heart. See my purpose. See my plan for your life. It's time for you to turn away from fear, to turn away from pride. And I will bring you... In By the way, this is another idea that if you don't want lots and lots of stuff for yourself, that's because you have pride. Talk or, about flipping something on its head. Yeah, or you have a spirit of poverty. Yes, and he'll talk about that. Yes. Into will. what I call the manifestation of now. The realm mm -hmm. of impossibility is opening to you in a fresh way. Get ready, an explosion of glory is here. That's what the Lord says. But you know what? There's something you teach. Actions activate the miraculous. Absolutely. Absolutely. Actions activate the miraculous. This if you is, don't have the right action, if you, don't, if you gotta rub the genie's lamp just the right just way. Just the right way. Every miracle in the Bible was was literally activated by the action of somebody who believed. You know, I'm, I'm reminded of- Except that there's a whole bunch of times when Jesus did miracles and no one activated him. Right, or no one even talked about which miracles they were to Jesus it, he's healed just, people. This is just a giant assertion that right. he's saying it with Leaping confidence. Mm -hmm. Well, he, and he is a doctor, so That's right. he must know what he's the saying. The woman with the issue of blood in, in the gospel account, and the Bible says she said within herself, today, today I'm gonna be made whole, today I'm gonna receive my miracle, and she pressed through the crowd. You know, sometimes that crowd is not people, sometimes that crowd is fear. So <laughs> How about the man who was laying next to the pool of water and wanted the waters to stir because the angel would come, mm -hmm. and he could never, because he was lame, he could never get in there, the, he could never be the first person in the pool to be healed. What happened in that? little story. Jesus called him out. Jesus went to him. The guy did nothing. He was just laying there waiting because he was thinking, Hey, that, you're ruining it. Yeah. 
He's a doctor. That's right. It says DR with a little dot. That means he's really a doctor. He knows what he's talking about. Sometimes that crowd is family. Sometimes that, that crowd is environment. But you got to be willing to press through the crowd, whatever that crowd may be, and lay hold on God's power and purpose for you. So if you don't lay hold, it's your Whatever fault. that means. Yeah. And of course, he knows how to do it. Yeah. Because he's talking about it on a TV show, and you have to just trust him. The life. And when people act on the word of God in faith, it releases miracles. You know what I'm hearing right now? You're saying, stop looking back. Stop looking back. You're saying it's a new day. It's a new day. You're saying it's a new beginning. You're saying, expect to hear from God. That's what you're saying. That's exactly what I'm saying. And it's happening right now. Pray right now. Father, in Jesus' name, I release a fresh glory all over the place. Wherever you're watching, right where you are, there's a tangible presence of God no, that's invading isn't. your space right now. Nope. Eternity is actually invading time. And guess what? The limits are removed right now. There's no more limitation. There's no more. Wait, did he just say in eternity is invading time? Isn't that from Star Trek? Highly illogical. <laughs> a blockage. There's a glory explosion a right blockage. there. Right where you are. There's a glory explosion. Yeah. Okay. He's yeah. praying for the blockage to we be We need a, a mop on aisle three. There was a glory explosion. <laughs> are you about to see the manifestation of God's presence like you've never seen it before? I'm telling you, the glory's in this place right now, and it's moving. It's moving. He's there working. It is. He's performing yeah, miracles person. in your life. Just receive it in Jesus' name. Here's what's going on. You're seeing something new, even in financial miracles, beyond what you've ever heard of. There is such a backlash on talking about prosperity yes. or, or fi finances yes. uh, that many have backed off, and you say they've thrown the baby away with the dirty bath water. Absolutely. This is great. This is what they all do. Again, except for Jesse Duplantis, who just outright encourages the worst sort of greed on planet Earth. Mm -hmm. He's going to do the thing that they all do. Yeah, you know, sometimes prosperity's gotten out of hand, but it's not getting out of hand with me when I tell you you're going to be rich. I can tell you that because God told me. Yeah, and <laughs> it's, for, just believe it's me. for all the other people that you're going to get rich. It's not for you. Right. You know, just because something is misused doesn't mean that that something itself is wrong. You know, a lot of people have been hurt with the prosperity message said. They've been manipulated, they've been abused, they've been taken advantage of, and it sort of left a dirty taste in their mouth. So here's what God is doing. God says, my new campaign for finances is not fundraising anymore. <laughs> my new campaign. <laughs> Wait, God's got like a publicity crew. He's got a media kit. He's got a public relations firm. Okay, guys, here's the new campaign. <laughs> Okay, the last time we did prosperity, it wasn't really working, yeah, you know, yeah. kind of... Cliff, you did a wrong job there yeah, with the whole baby bat. Yeah, they, and, they just thrown it all out. And Fred, you, you went overboard with the word of faith. <laughs> Kenneth Hagin, what were you thinking with that guy? <laughs> we got this new guy. I think we're going to... We got a new campaign. It's a lot better. More, it's the glory. Glory. God is saying, I'm going to do it myself. <laughs> well, I mean, I, you told me recently you were at a meeting. He's going to do it himself. All of a sudden. We interrupted him. I want to hear that again. Yeah. He's not fundraising anymore. And God says, my new campaign for finances uh -huh. is not fundraising anymore. It's the glory. God is saying, I'm going to do it myself. <laughs> well, how I, I... Wow. I don't even know what that means. I don't know what that means either. I think what he's trying to say is there's going to be so many miracles that the money's just going to miraculously kind of show up, because I think he talks about that. He does. So somehow the glory... Is going to explode. It's going to explode. All you have to do is receive it, and, and then money's going to come. Yes. Because you're not selfish. Well, what about when Benny Hinn says, favor is better than money? Because <laughs> if you have enough favor... Money's going to come all money, the time. Money comes with the favor. No, th there's more, because money comes... It's just harvest I think we can receive is favor. I know people look for money. It's favor. Favor is way better than money because favor will keep money coming. More. You get more money when you have favor right. than if you just it have money. It keeps coming. It keeps coming. Yeah. If you have favor, money keeps coming. That's why you want favor. Favor will, 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 will keep prosperity on you. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, so is favor and glory synonymous? Actually, the glory of God would cause these people... To, to tremble in fear and to fall to their faces. And have no words left. Yeah. 
they would not be babbling like idiots or babbling at all. And you told me recently you were at a meeting and all of a sudden, I'm, of all things, the offering, the glory of God showed up. What happened? You know, this is amazing. You know, I think it's kind of important to know the definition of what the glory of God is. Because he's saying all of a sudden the offering came and the glory of God showed up. Yeah, I don't know what that, it's, it's stupid. I mean, they use it interchangeably with whatever they want yeah. for God's approval of whatever's happening. If the glory of God showed up, again, these people would be on their faces. No, the glory of God's showing up within money. That's how the glory shows. Yeah, or it's basically a bunch of people get all excited in, in, a, in a meeting and they claim that, well, that was the glory of God. Well, right here, we're going to talk about the glory of God because he showed up in the offering. Said, I'm in this meeting, and uh, the, the offering time is there, and uh, the glory just comes in. Nobody prompts anything. Nobody asks for a particular amount of money. None of that. We're just, we're just kind of in a worshipful mode. Before we can even say anything, the Lord comes in and does his own fundraising. And this is what happens. We see the book of Acts, chapter 4 and 5, all over again, where the Bible says... Do we really want to read chapter four and five? I want to see how he summarizes okay. it. Okay. Because we didn't. I don't remember this part. That when the glory came in, in the in, in the body of believers, that people began to bring their 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 possessions, and nobody lacked anything. And see, there was just literally an influx of people responding. Okay, so he's saying that because of the glory, that's why people gave. Right. That's not what it says. Mm-hmm. But again. Nobody cares. Nobody needs the Bible. You just got to no, listen to him. Just get a summary a from, the, from the doctor. Right. Yeah. Um, but he is summarizing chapter four and five as to what it's happening at this meeting. And what he'll say is that someone gave $7,000. And you, someone else came along and said, hey, here's money for... Do you see a problem with him describing how this is going to happen? Why would you need to describe this thing that's going to happen when it's going to happen without being described? <laughs> It's just going to show up. It's just going to happen because he says because God's because doing God's, it himself. Yeah, God's doing it himself. He doesn't. He, that's his new campaign. Remember, <laughs> yeah, the new campaign right. is we don't need guys talking about it. Is God's going to do it himself? Well, then why is he doing it? He's doing it. He's right. describing the thing that he believes God is in the process of doing, and the thing that he's describing is a thing that shouldn't be described by its very nature. So, good point. The other point I, I want. That's make, why I'm here. I know. That's why we do this show. The other point I want to make is, okay, let's look at chapter 4 and 5 of Acts. Is it exactly the way that he's describing? When well, he said, he's oh, a doctor. Chap chapter 4 and 5, this is exactly what happened. The glory came and they said, let's just start throwing money at whatever. That is not what happened in chapter 4 and 5. Peter and John before the council. I'm just going to read the subtitles. The believers okay. pray for boldness. They had everything in common. What, when is that? Verse This what? is in uh, verse uh, like chapter 4, verse 32. Okay. Now the full number of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one said that any of the things that belonged to him was his own, but they had everything in common. Uh, let me see if there's something. There's The signs and wonders came before that. Uh, let me go back. He's making a point of how everyone gave money. That was the glory. Yeah, to do whatever they have. And now, Lord, look upon their threats and grant to, your, grant to your servants to continue to speak your word with all boldness while you stretch out your hand to heal and signs and wonders are performed through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. Uh, verse 31, and when they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and continued to speak the word of God with boldness. So he's interpreting that as, well, the, the glory just showed up. Mm -hmm. And so the next thing is they all gave their money. Mm -hmm. So listen to the rest of what he says about this. Keep that open. Okay. Nobody's prompting them, but they're responding. And I'm seeing this all over the place where we go. It's, it's all over the place. Tell me about the uh, pastor yes. that was so turned off on uh, talking about money. Yeah, and, and by the way, let me, let, me, let me share with you. I was that pastor just a few years ago that was turned off. So I can relate. And I remember this young pastor, he came to me and he said, you know, I was so turned off by, you know, finances and things like that. He said, but he realized that he had inadvertently adopted a poverty mentality. There it is, the poverty mentality. Yeah, and he's saying he was that pastor just a few years yeah. ago, and that's not true. He's been in this world for 
at least a decade at this point because I saw videos of him that were much older from wow. like 2009. So then you talk about somebody who's not telling the truth on top of it. Well, he's pretending to be a doctor. <laughs> I mean, if somebody's pretending, literally pretending to be a doctor, all bets are off that they're ever going to tell the truth. <laughs> In any sense. I mean, when any, you, if, that's any, your, if that's your foundation. Any level of their life, they're yeah. going to be honest. Okay. Let's when, keep going. When I was in art okay. school, yes, uh, I went to the American Academy of Art in Chicago, and I never graduated, and I don't care because the degree would have been worthless anyway, but the president of the school was a graduate who walked out the doors and turned around and came back and became a teacher, you know, decades and decades earlier. And it was like an associate degree. It was like a, a community college sort of a degree. It mm -hmm. wasn't even a bachelor's degree. Well, he was the uh, watercolor instructor. And I remember one of the students calling him Dr. Shapiro. And he never stopped and corrected the student and said, oh, I'm, I'm not a doctor. You don't have to call me that. He let him refer to him as the doctor when he didn't even have a bachelor's degree. Wow. And I remember that really disturbed me at the time. I was mm -hmm. like, well, wait a minute, he, he's not a doctor, is he? I mean, I, and I looked him up. I was trying to figure out what's his background. And people who have a real problem with their ego, they, they want to appear... Kind of larger than life. Larger than life. They kind of want to puff themselves up. They will either call themselves a doctor, which is the worst sort of a situation, or they'll allow people to think they're a doctor when they're really not. This has even happened with John MacArthur. People think he's a doctor because he's got a, a seminary and a school, and he actually has a, a pretty substantial honorary doctorate degree, and he has a lot of the qualifications of a doctor, but he's not an actual doctor. So in that case... People mistakenly call him that because it kind of makes sense. You would just assume yeah. that he is, uh, but he doesn't use the word. I think there was a time when it actually was used by people who were promoting him, and it had to get corrected. And I, I think he initiated that, if I okay. remember correctly. But in, in any case, it's just it's really bad when people call themselves a doctor or they allow themselves to be called a doctor. If you ever notice that, you should go, Wait, whoa, 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 what are you, what are you doing there? Doctor of what? Yeah, an honorary doctoral degree is not the same thing as actually calling yourself a doctor. Okay. Yeah. And a lack mindset. And I've been doing some teaching on the economy of God, and he overheard it, and he began to catch it in his spirit. And he went, and he said, God, I'm sorry for having this lack mentality. I repent of this because I know there's abundance that you have for me. And when he did that, something began to happen. He's walking out of the church, and somebody comes up to him, and they say, Pastor, I don't know what it is, but I have to give you this. And they give him a check for $7,000. Then while he's crying over that, he's literally on his knees crying, while he's crying over that, someone else comes in the back room and says, where's the pastor? The Lord just spoke to me and said, I have to give him $10,000. Now, mind you, nobody has asked money from anyone. This, this is right after you t spoke revelation to him. When he got the revelation, it began to change his entire environment. But guess what? The, the atmosphere changed, just like what uh, Bill Johnson says. The atmosphere changes. Okay, now he's about to have a commercial where they sell his little package. If he didn't claim to be speaking on behalf of God, which is what it means to have this revelation. Do you think people would want to buy his package as much? No. If he said, I've got some tips for finances so that you can be smart with your money, would anybody buy it? No. Probably not. But secret knowledge secret that came knowledge, from God. And, and he spoke to that pastor. And then he got money. You know, a lot of money. Yeah. He's going he's gonna to get more money in just a second here. Next Sunday, he comes to church, and a man says, Pastor, I've been sitting on this, but, but when you came before us and repented for a lack mentality, something happened, and they said, God told me to pay your mortgage for a year, and they wrote him a check for $15,000 on the spot. Now, I want to say this, because this is important. Mm -hmm. When God does something, and man's not involved with it, we can't, uh, we can't blame manipulation. We can't say that somebody's hands were twisted. But when God comes down himself <laughs> and I'm moves, twisted. no one can refute it. And I believe, Sid, that we're entering into a season of irrefutable miracles. We're entering a season of irrefutable miracles. And so what that means is... There should be miracles that are irrefutable. But what kind of miracles with what he just framed it, how he just oh. framed this? It's yeah. all money. It should be money. Yeah. Money. That's yeah. what we're talking about. But it's for other people. It's not for you. I'm talking about the news stations are going to have to come and say, you know what? We were wrong. We were totally wrong about this Jesus thing. He is real. He's alive. 
because of money. So wow, this is a complete misunderstanding of how the gospel spreads. That's it doesn't, right. It doesn't spread because people do miracles and because people have money. Yeah. Wow. I noticed it used to be poor. Now you're neighbor. rich. Now you're rich. Wow. I want to be a I want to be a Christian so I can get rich too. Yeah, that's a great reason for people to become <laughs> yeah, Christians, right. so they can get rich like you or have all their financial needs met miraculously. Right. This is how you. Uh, spread a completely false gospel. Yeah, which is a, not the same gospel. It's another gospel. Like in the book of Galatians? Like Galatians. Yeah. Yes. So. Because now that's the focus. It's, it's, it's we don't want to miss out on the money. We don't want to miss out on what God's doing. We don't want to miss out on the glory, we, on the favor. We, we don't want to miss out on, and that's all we focus on. It's when, like, no, what is the most important thing? When we were in Amway and we heard this kind of stuff, it was the same thing. You, it you, was. Who wants to be a Christian if you people are no different than the rest of the world struggling with finances and just getting by? Don't you want to, you know, be victorious in life? Because if you're victorious, you'll be happier and you'll have a bounce in your step and you'll be more positive And people are going to look at you and say, I want what he has. Well, then the Apostle Paul was a really bad example of what it means to be a Christian. All of the apostles were. Yeah. Most of them went to their deaths yeah. for their faith. Most of them just kind of got by. They didn't yeah. they didn't live in luxury. They didn't run after Even, money and they didn't teach this they didn't teach this. They didn't teach this prosperity. They did stuff. not teach this. No, they taught the opposite. Right. And in Jesus fact, taught the opposite. I do have Jesus a, taught the opposite. As a matter of fact, the rich young ruler was the opposite. Here is the biblical guide to the prosperity gospel. There this is go. from our website, The Messed Up Church. Mm -hmm. And this is just a bunch of Bible verses that these Compiled. prosperity people mm -hmm. do not want you to read. They claim to be Bible-based, but there's a whole bunch of stuff in the Bible that they don't want you to look at. And I do want you to look at it because I think it'll be actually So that's really under important. The Messed Up Church. Yep. Oops, let's get rid of this guy. Yeah. How about that hairdo though, huh? Hey, that was something. Okay, now let's get back to this. Okay. And he's moving. Yeah. God's about to do these kind of unusual miracles all over the place. And so again, if if he's about to do these all these kind of miracles all over the place, why do you have new shows where you keep talking about the thing that's going to happen, Sid Roth? Why don't you have a, a whole follow up? Why don't you have like a four hour episode of just nothing but absolute proof of actual over miracles? Over and over, you should yeah. have two years worth. Everybody's you got have cell two phones. They should have people should have footage. You know, you could have. You know what I just heard him say on one of his recent shows? What? That he's having a hard time getting content. Uh, he's having a hard time finding people to, to do show. He has so many people watching his various YouTube channels and the other, you know, because he has a network that's part of whatever the other thing on TV Christian, is. Yeah, that he would like to get more shows, but he doesn't have enough content. Well, he should call us. <laughs> yeah, maybe he'd want to put our show on. We're kind of... No, but think about it. He, yeah. He's... In fact, one of the women who's in that, I did that Trump prophecies that all yeah. failed thing it's just some woman talking to her cell phone in her yeah. kitchen like they all do yeah and she's saying how you know trump's gonna win god told me <clears throat> and of course she was totally wrong right she has a show now on one of sid roth's network things so you don't even have to be a a, a true prophet a false prophet's good enough as long as you can are there any true prophets he has no they're all false <laughs> there yeah. you go. but i'm saying you, you don't know, have to you don't have to be notable you but don't have to be somebody in Everyone knows. As long as you are egotistical enough to go in front of a camera and claim to speak on behalf of God, Sid Roth wants you. So. Well, we found a lot of them on our Dingbat yes, Prophets. Yes, we did. <laughs> There's no There's shortage. There's a whole other show we started, Dingbat yeah. Prophets. You should take a look. Yeah. And what I'm saying, Sid, this is a move of the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. We are in a move of God. It's not about to happen. It's already happening right now. Okay. Then there should be no... No shortage lack. of footage. Exactly. Yeah. There should be so many miracles that yeah. he could have 24 hours. Every hour would be a new program. Because this is two years worth of it's already happened. Yeah. Let's watch this for more. You know, we have to have an attitude of expectancy. Oh. Because it's the attitude of expectation that creates the atmosphere for miracles. <laughs> what Bible verse is that from? Get the attitude right. The book of uh, Bill Johnson, I think. Because that's what he says, you know. You got to have the... You the attitudal book. You got to... <laughs> The Book of Attitudes, I have that 516. Whole, I did that video with him and Benny Hinn talking about the atmosphere. Yeah. you got to set the atmosphere. Yeah, otherwise then, God can't do anything. God's going, hey, I want to do stuff, but you guys got to set the atmosphere. I'm, I'm, hey, you know what I've seemed hello, to find out? I'm God. God, God allows the atmosphere to get really bad. 
until you really realize what you need to learn because we are yeah. so sinful. At least that's, that's what we found. Yep. It's not because... God lets your life completely fall apart when you believe this stuff. Right. And it's falling apart right. and everything doesn't come true. That's how God gets your attention. Yeah. And you finally say, you know what? I don't think I want to listen to these clowns anymore because they keep saying the same stuff and it never comes true. It only comes true for them. And it's only what they say. It's all storytelling for the most part. And then They're you bring the Bible out and see what Jesus said about what to expect yeah. in this life. False what prophets. Kind of we should expect false prophets in this life. And it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard. It's going to be a hard life, and yet you need to carry your cross and follow him. So that's a little bit of a different message than what yeah. they're stout, you know, st yeah, spouting. I would like, I would like spouting. to find this um, expectation principle in the Bible. Yeah, God's, we should do that. God's, I'm going to write that down. God's saying... I want to do amazing things. I want to give you the Skittles. I bet you we find different scripture but verses. But you need to expect the Skittles. If you're going to get the Skittles I want to give you, you got to really expect them. In other words, we have to live in anticipation every day. You know, every day I wake up, I say this. I, I literally say this out of my mouth. Something good is going to happen to me. That's what I say. When I wake up, something good is going to happen to me. But not only do I say that, I say something good is going to happen through me. Yes. So I'm not just a receiver of the miracle, but I'm a distributor of the miracle as well. Yeah. So, so okay, again, this is a, a, a year and... Uh, almost eight, two years. Almost two years ago. Mm -hmm. So he should be able to talk about all the miracles that happened to him. And through him. And through him. And then Sid should not have any lack of problem he, with... I mean, Keenan should start his own network. Right. Now. He should have so much footage. A lot of people that say, why are you so miracle conscious? What's the real purpose of miracles? Mm. See, miracles are not about impressing people. No. It's not about no. having a big social media platform. The purpose of miracles, the Bible says in Mark 16, and these signs shall follow them that believe. So miracle... This is another video that I, just, I got started on uh, gathering footage for. I didn't finish. Well, no, I, I got a lot of videos that are either all in my head or I just got them started. Let's look at Mark 16. Let's do that. This is the uh, controversial long ending of Mark. and um, Why is it controversial? Well, because some of the modern translations said, we're going to maybe put it in the Bible, but we're going to have a footnote that says, we're not sure if this really is the Bible. Why? Because it's not in all the manuscripts. Uh, Mark 16. This the long ending of Mark. Which is Mark 16. Yep. Okay. Well, it's not it's not the entire chapter. It's the it's the part of it <clears throat> that begins at verse nine. Oh, okay. Um, and the King James Bible does have it, and this is the the EHV, the Evangelical Heritage Version. Uh, we're not really pushing this per se, but this is the one that our Lutheran Synod, the Wells Synod, worked on, and they put it in there with no. Qualms about no it. No qualms about mm -hmm. it. Let me let me just read. I'll just start from the beginning of chapter 16. Okay. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so they could go and anoint Jesus. Very early on the first day of the week at sunrise, they went to the tomb. They were saying to each other, Who will roll the stone away from the entrance to the tomb for us? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. He said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter. He is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. They went out and hurried away from the tomb, trembling and perplexed. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. Verse 9. After Jesus had risen early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had driven seven demons. She went and reported to those who had been with him as they mourned and wept. When they heard that he was alive and had been seen by her, they did not believe it. After these things, Jesus appeared in another form to two of them as they were walking along on their way to the country. These two also returned and reported it to the rest, but they did not believe them either. Verse 14, later he appeared to the eleven themselves as they were reclining at the table. He rebuked them for their unbelief and hardness of heart because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. And this is something that needs to get brought up over and over again. Jesus rebukes people when they don't have faith in him. 
this idea in the Word of Faith movement is that faith is a thing you, you muster up in yourself. You have to have this substance called faith. And that's just not the way faith really is. It's, it's not the correct way to describe faith. You can't have just this thing called faith. You have faith in something. So when Jesus rebukes them, it's because they didn't have faith in him. Mm -hmm. He just really emphasized over and over again, you need to believe in me. Of course, our human nature, we always fail at that. Right. But he was constantly telling them, why don't you believe? Why don't you believe? You've seen enough now. Believe. That's just an aside. Okay, let me keep going. This is where he says in, in uh, verse 15, he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. These signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak in new languages. They will pick up snakes. And if they drink any deadly poison, poison, it will not harm them. They will lay their hands on the sick and they will get well. Then the Lord Jesus, after he had spoken to them, was taken up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. That last little section, all these people, these signs will follow. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. But he's using this, actually he is using this about money. Well, In, in, in miracles. It, it's not just money, it's about miracles. miraculous money. You know, m miracles causing money to just show up. So which sign is that? The casting out demons or the new tongues? <laughs> What's amazing to me is... I mean, why even put that verse up there? Do you think anybody cares on the Sid Roth show? I guess not. Is anybody checking their Bible on this show? I guess show? not. No. Um, but that's an excellent question, and they should be, but they're not. This is the thing that I want to make a video about. Bill Johnson says, doesn't say pray for the hick. Pray for the hick. <laughs> <laughs> I, was talking, I was thinking about the snake handlers in my head. <laughs> Bill Johnson says, it doesn't say pray for the sick, it says heal, heal them. Heal the sick, yes. Um, they will lay their hands on the sick and they will get well. Well, okay, if you're going to use that as the, as the model for all Christians for all time, then you should also be handling snakes. Like and you the, should not have closed your school of supernatural healing. Right. Isn't that the School of Supernatural the, Ministries? The Bethel School had to close because they had a... All, a they had, COVID outbreak. Yeah. What happened to that? They, I they guess they were still just practicing. <laughs> they are still practicing they're healing. practicing and it didn't work. But this is this is a really confusing verse for people because yeah, if, if you try to apply it to all Christians for all time, mm -hmm. you literally should be picking up snakes on purpose. And there are people who do that, yeah, and they that. and they die yes. because they pick up poisonous snakes. Right. The snake bites them and kills them. And they won't go to the doctor because because they that leave. would show a lack of faith. Right. And they think that's you know what you need to do as Christians because you're supposed to somehow be following this. Right. And I want to make a whole video about that because it's know. fascinating because they really do take this seriously <laughs> in the worst possible way. Bill Johnson also claims to take it seriously, but he only takes the verse that he wants, and then of course he doesn't do that either. His own wife has had cancer for years now, and she's been going to alternative treatments in Europe. Was this before or after the grave sucking? This was after the grave sucking, which she didn't do. So she do. grave sucked first. Yeah. Even and though then she, she said, got cancer. Yeah. Hmm. Don't blame C.S. Lewis. You know, I'm sure he had nothing to do with it, even though she was laying on his grave. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, let's keep going. One of many. Is God's advertisement plan to demonstrate the power of his kingdom above all other kingdoms. You see, miracles demonstrate that the God we serve is really alive. This is very, very important. We're never to follow signs, but we, we, we follow him and signs follow us. No, he's got it completely wrong. Um, the doctor? The <laughs> doctor. <laughs> has got something wrong? He went to the... So tell me, Dr. Kozar, what do you see in scripture? <laughs> you know, Dan Long and I have been calling each other doctor. Have you? <laughs> and somebody made a comment on one of our videos saying, how do you know he's really a doctor or something? They were offended. Like, Lighten up. Yeah. Lighten up, Skippy. <laughs> <laughs> this is after Jesus has been resurrected, and he comes into the room behind the locked doors. He comes through the door. Yes. Jesus said to them, this is uh, verse 20. Uh, yeah, verse 20, verse 21. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you, just as the Father has sent me, I am also sending you. After saying this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whenever you forgive people's sins, they are forgiven. Whenever you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. 
which is why the Lutheran Church does what it does in the beginning of the services. It's, it's the uh, idea that the pastor can assure you of the forgiveness that, that Jesus uh, provided for us. But that's not what we're talking about. The next verse, 24. But Thomas, one of the twelve, the one called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples kept telling him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger into the mark of the nails and put my hand into his side, I will never believe. After eight days, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them. Peace be with you, he said. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and look at my hands. Take your hand and put it into my side. Do not continue to doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus, in the presence of his, of his disciples, did many other miraculous signs that are not written in this book. But these are written, why? So that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. So this is making it really clear. You've, am I not going to need this TV? Um, oh, oh, up more. I mean, you're ready. Okay, there we go. It's making it really clear that Jesus said to Thomas, okay, I'm going to give you proof. But don't expect this to constantly be the way this works for all of the rest of and church history. And nobody should. Yeah. He said it's more blessed to the people yeah. who have not seen and yet believe. And these things are written so that you would believe. So not he according just, to him. What he just said was we got to have Skittles from heaven so that we can all believe. Or we right. got to have miraculous money. People got to just hand us a check for Right. $7, we're not supposed $1. to go after the signs, but we're supposed to show the signs. Because then everybody will become Christians. Which means that people are still running after the signs. Yeah, exactly. As far as physical miracles, yes. Uh, if I speak, the average place I speak, and people are honest, and I say, how many need a healing? Just about every hand goes up. You're seeing this even in your... Look at the uh, average age of his audience. <laughs> own church all over the place. Um, it, it, you were telling me about his disease. I still can't pronounce it. Uh, vitiligo or vitiligo. It's vitiligo. actually vitiligo. It's a pigmentation condition that basically reverses the, the pigmentation of the skin hmm. and it creates like these these spots all over the body. And, and, and mind you, it's, it's mostly cosmetic. It's not something that a person has to be healed of. I want to be clear of that. But this particular young man was in the church and, and uh, his mother brought him in. And I saw about, I would say a third of his head was covered in this, this, this pigmentation thing. And uh, I said to the mother, I said, God can fix that. That's all I said. I didn't, I didn't go through a long prayer. I didn't take him in the back room. I didn't rub oil all over him, any of that. I just said, God can fix that. In two, Wait, when you said that, did you believe God was going to do it? Absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt. He has to perform his word. You see, we have to say what he has already said. Wow. So according to what he just said, mm -hmm. he should have... Everywhere he goes, miracles. Mm -hmm. Every single time he because asks for God a miracle, has to do what God he has says. to. I don't know why he doesn't have a 24-hour-a-day, seven-day-a-week TV show with Sid, footage of all the miracles. Right. Sid, get on the ball. This guy is telling you he's got it. He, he's telling you what you need to know right. to have nonstop miracles. He said that he is the healer. He said that his word will not return void. So when we come into agreement with God... His word will not return void. Is not about healing. No. Watch this. We qualify for what Matthew 18 says, where two or more shall agree. They'll have what they say. Okay. That doesn't what that means either. That's not what that means either. But does anybody in Sid Roth's audience care what these does Bible Sid verses Roth say? Sid Roth care? Sid Roth doesn't care what the Bible no. says. He really Sorry, doesn't. Sorry, but you don't. Right. Exactly. Sid Roth, if you ever get a hold of our videos, prove me wrong. Kick these people off your show. Your friend is Dr. Michael Brown, who's a real doctor. Doesn't it offend you that a real doctor is one of your friends? You're insulting him by having fake doctors on your show week after week, year after year. Right. I mean, I respect doctors. It's really hard, whether it's a, a physician or a doctor of theology, a doctor of anything. It's really hard. And to call yourself a doctor when you're not. Right. And it's just... Ugh. Okay, so... We're looking at Matthew When eight. two people agree, yeah. hey, honey. Yes. Hold my hand. I'm holding it. I want a new Ferrari. Say, Amen. Amen. Okay, so. <laughs> Amen, so be it. In, in Jesus' name. Amen. I claim that new Ferrari. Amen. Uh, yeah, we should have asked for like a. Um, 
something else. Like a warranty to go with it to pay for all the repairs. <laughs> Too late. The $900 oil changes. <laughs> So according to this interpretation of the verse, you should, be, you should be able to get whatever you want in life, anything. Healing, money. This interpretation. Yeah. Right. Let's look at what the verse is actually about. In context. Um, I'm going to look it up in this one because this is a little bit easier to understand. Matthew 18, 19. And I'm, I'm going to do what I recommend, what we always recommend. Don't read the one verse. Read the whole section to get the gist of it, the context. This, is, this solves 95% of all your problems. I, I don't understand the Bible. Well, just read it. Just read, yeah, the, whole read the whole thing. Not the one verse. And don't listen to these people. That'll <laughs> be the... Clear up a lot of confusion. Clear up a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, the lost sheep. Is that what this... Matthew 18, 19. Oh, no. It's show your brother his sin. Mm -hmm. That's right. I, I did a video on this. It, starting in verse 15. If your brother sins against you, go and show him his sin just between the two of you. If he listens to you, you have regained your brother. But if he will not listen, take one or two others along with you, so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. The, the ecclesia, the gathering. I don't have the Greek in front of me, but I'm pretty sure that's what that's referring to. Cause okay, keep going. Yeah, the, uh, the visible assembly of believers. Um, and if he refuses to listen even to the church, then treat him as an unbeliever or a tax collector. Amen, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Amen, I tell you again, if two of you on earth agree to ask for anything, it will be done for them by my Father who is in heaven. In fact, where two or three have gathered together in my name, there I am among them. Does this sound like the two or three of you get together and agree about whatever you want? God has to give it to you? Or does this have something to do with this whole issue? Of correcting a brother in Christ. Yes. Hmm. Well, I don't know. Well, how do you really how do you really decide how you're going to interpret Scripture? Well, the easiest thing is just to read it in context. And there's nothing here about when two or three agree <clears throat> to something, you get whatever you want. Mm -hmm. There you go. So... This is about church discipline, and it's um, actually a really tough issue because yeah. most churches don't practice this anymore. No, but it's, majority of them It has do to not. do with excommunication. Right. If you have an unrepentant sinner who is refusing to be corrected for real, obvious, verifiable sin, that's mm -hmm. why you have to have more than one person, then you eventually have to tell them that you have to leave our fellowship. You cannot be a part of our church anymore, not because we hate you, but because we love you in, so much. in Christian love, right. you need to be reprimanded and we can't have you. Your soul is at stake. Your soul is at stake right. and we need to show the severity of it by removing you from our fellowship with the hopes that you will see how serious this is and then you'll, you'll go, what was I doing? I'm rebelling against God himself. Right. I need to stop and I need to, you know, repent of that and go back to church and of course that's what a church wants to happen that's what we always want to happen but when they're saying that we agree about this we agree that yes this man needs to be removed from fellowship because we've all agreed that he is violating god's word intentionally and this poisons the church we agree that we can't have this kind of activity going on this open rebellion in the church mm -hmm. um, if you don't have this in your church and you have a lot of really you know, kind of fake Christians in your church. You don't have, you're not following this. Yeah. This is, you know, when people say, oh, the church is so bad. Well, if you were practicing this, it probably would help some of that to be cleared some up. Some of it. We're not saying that we wouldn't have sinners anymore. Because right. we always have that sin nature that we're fighting against. Right. But the open sin, yeah. the open rebellion is something that is, is supposed to be stopped. And that's what this verse is about. It has nothing to do with what he said. So when you agree with God, that's two or more people right there. When you and God agree, that's the majority. Oh yeah. So oh yeah. Was this young man? I'm gonna get this that. Young man, when we said God can fix it, to everybody's surprise, it was totally reversed. In two weeks, it's totally gone. We have the pictures. We have everything. It was totally gone. Now one of the reasons. Now is there just out of curiosity, if she had gone to a doctor, could she have had some med? Surprise, it was totally reversed. In two weeks, it can fix it. To everybody's surprise, it was totally reversed. In two weeks, it's totally gone. We have the pictures, we have everything, it was totally gone. Now, one of the reasons now it's totally reversed. In two weeks, it's totally. I, I see a little residue of it, actually. You know, what's interesting is in the beginning, he said when he saw him, a third of his head was covered in this. 
That didn't look like a third of his head. It sounded like maybe he exaggerated how much the kid really had. And, and granted, yeah. he obviously that. This is a really blurry photograph. Yeah. You know what? It could be true. Absolutely. God, God does miracles. We, we're not against miracles at all. If, no. if, if our kids had something horribly wrong and it was damaging them, we would pray and we would expect God to heal if it's in his will. If we totally expect will. that, That's but we right. wouldn't demand it of him. Right. That's the key difference. Right. Especially when he said, well, God has to do what he says he's going to do. It's like, okay. God doesn't have to do anything. In that scripture, that's not what this is talking about. Right. Guys, it was totally reversed. In two weeks, it's totally gone. We have the pictures, we have everything. It was totally gone. Now, one of the reasons... Now, is there just out of curiosity, if she'd gone to a doctor, could she have had some medicine to cure that? No, absolutely not. No? No. Boy, that's a real miracle. Yeah. You see, a miracle is when God interrupts the natural course of human operation. It's when God invades our natural course of events. You, you, you had an explosion of miracles in Australia. Creative miracles. Tell me about one. Yeah, I'm preaching in this meeting in Australia. It was very powerful. Preaching in this meeting, and as I'm preaching, I just kind of stopped and I had a word of knowledge. I said, somebody's eyes opening right now. Well, what I didn't know is that one of the guys in the tech booth had a, a very severe accident where his, his eyeball was actually detached from his brain. There was no tissue connecting the eye, and it was total blindness. For six years, he suffered from this condition. Wait, was that medically treatable? No, that's not medically. They can't go and just reattach that. He was totally blind. There was no, okay. there was no uh, <laughs> fixing it. And all of a sudden, it was either God or, or be blind. It was God or be blind. And so, in that moment, literally, like a snap. This is the way he described it. There was a snap, and something popped, and his eyeball reattached to the brain supernaturally. <laughs> and, and watch this. He, he starts shouting and he starts screaming and he starts jumping up and down. He says, my eye, my eye, my eye. And his wife thought he was going crazy or something because he's like, my eye. He's just kind of pointing. He's like, look, 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 my eye. And he has sustained that miracle till today. You know, when Keenan prays, and this is, it's not just him. It's for all of us. When Keenan prays, there is the glory of God and he speaks God's word, anyone can speak God's word, but in that glory, miracles erupt. When we return, I want Kenan to pray for miracles to erupt in the glory of God. Be right back. Uh, Call now and get Dr. Keenan Bridges' anointed brand new book, School of the Miraculous, and his powerful three-part audio teaching series, Ridiculous Favor and Miraculous Provision. Okay, I want you to pay attention to what is being promised if you buy this uh, I think it's a DVD or a book and a DVD. What is he promising? Is he saying that you're going to learn some things about God? Or is he actually making very, very specific promises? Plus his bonus book, 90 Days of Breakthrough. This is an exclusive offer for our Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9681. Keenan's anointed brand new book, School of the Miraculous, will bring you into a place where miracles are commonplace. Through okay, so you will be brought to a place where miracles are commonplace. Through this book, you will... This book, you will understand five keys to activating God's supernatural power. You're going to understand five keys to activate God's supernatural power. It's a, it's a promise that this book is claiming. Overcome the obstacles of the enemy. Understand that God intended miracles not to be rare events for a select few. Learn how to develop a miracle mindset. Operate in miracles and establish a lifestyle in which miraculous events occur every day. You will also receive Kenan's powerful three-part audio teaching series, Ridiculous Favor and Miraculous Provision. This audio teaching series is based on an open vision that Dr. Bridges saw. <laughs> it was literally part. raining Skittles candy out of the sky. <laughs> Sit right here. Sit. Stay. <laughs> uh, and get some popcorn. Can you stay here? Keep me company. My host has left. My co-host. Just for a minute. Hi, I'm Steve Kozar here with Lucy Kozar. Lucy, how you doing today? What do you think about the Skittles from Heaven? Do you think that's a uh, a true spiritual thing? That hey, 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 hey! Don't leave. Don't leave. Come on, this is good stuff. God said to him, this one presents ridiculous favor and miraculous provision that she goes. God wants to pour out upon you. Through this teaching, you will understand what God's favor... Tr okay, so you will understand what God's favor is. I guess you wouldn't understand what God's favor is by reading the Bible. You need this thing. Who he is. Discover the blueprint to tap into ridiculous favor. Oh, so you're going to get the blueprint to tap into ridiculous favor, not just normal favor. Unquantifiable favor. Understand how to activate... Unquantifiable. Wow. So it's ridiculous. Honey, did you hear that? 
I did. She's making popcorn. Ridiculous. It's unquantifiable and it's ridiculous. God's favor and miraculous prevent. Back of your head is ridiculous. Uh, yeah, I just want to let you know the back of your head is ridiculous. <laughs> in your life. Keenan offers powerful, life-changing prayers of impartation and activation, prophetic words and declarations. Plus, you will receive his bonus book, 90 Days of Breakthrough. In this practical, power-packed, easy-to-read collection of 90 declarations, you will be empowered by the Word of God and the revelatory teaching of Dr. Keenan Bridges to release the miraculous in your life and receive the breakthrough that you need in the area of your future. Doesn't it seem like the commercial should be done by now of all the stuff they told you was going to happen? These commercials are amazing. They just keep going. I think they just wear people down where they're finally like, ah, I can't take anymore. Just, I just gotta buy the thing. I, I had no ability to resist. I, what's the number? Just, but I gotta order it. Your finances and your well-being. Don't miss out on getting Dr. Keenan's anointed brand new book, School of the Miraculous, and his powerful three-part audio teaching series, Ridiculous Favor and Miraculous Provision, plus his bonus book, 90 Days of Breakthrough. This is an exclusive offer for our rich supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9681. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9681 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. Okay, I'm trying to stay away from chocolate. Yeah. So he's having some pumpkin seeds and I can't have that. So I decided to have some popcorn because this is really difficult to get through without eating something. The rest of the show is just us sitting here eating. Eating, right. Here we go. You talk about, in your teaching and in your writings, kingdom culture. Yes. What do you mean by that? You know, I believe in this particular hour that we're in, we have to adopt the kingdom culture. We have to adopt the culture of the kingdom, not just the culture of church or religion, but we have to adopt the culture of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Paul said, he said, I didn't come to you with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and power. The Bible says the kingdom is not in meat and drink, but it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. We just read that, remember? And I said, this is the one that Bill Johnson and all these people yeah. always use. Mm -hmm. Totally out of context. Mm -hmm. And so there is a way of doing things that we have to adopt if we want to see manifestation in our lives. I would like you to lead people in a prayer for those that have never had experiential knowledge of yes. God, never been born from above, and ones that have, and, and, and also to repent the ones that have. Gotcha. It wouldn't hurt for everyone to repeat this prayer. I'm going to repeat it after Kenan. You know, I want to pray for you right now. Um, the Lord gave me a vision where when I went to heaven in this an encounter where I was in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell, but I saw the face of Jesus, the most pure, holy, powerful face I've ever seen. His eyes were like flames. Was he eating Skittles when you saw him or was mm. that a different vision? I a different one. And he said to me, tell my people there's so much more. Mm. And you may be one of those that, that really are wanting to experience more. I want to pray for you right now. Stretch your hands right where you are, all over this place. Nope. Father, in the name of Jesus. This is the <clears throat> gospel of more. Yeah, mm -hmm. the gospel of more. Mm -hmm. Jesus, you know, you died on the cross and all that stuff. You granted us eternal life, a free gift we don't deserve. But we want more. Mm -hmm. We want Skittles. Mm -hmm. What, kind what of that represents. Ridiculous, unquantifiable provision in, in favor. Mm -hmm. But it's not about us getting stuff. No. Even though it's about us you know, getting stuff. I found stuff. interesting when he said, when um, Sid Roth was saying, well, pray for those who, you know, were born from above and those who haven't yet. And then pray for the ones who were born from above but need to repent. Okay, if you're not born from above but you need to pray for them, they need to repent. I mean, what does that mean? I don't know. Like he knows. I don't know what To me, talking. I'm interpreting that as, okay, pray for those people who don't, aren't Christians, but pray for the Christians that they repent. It's like, okay, we all need to repent. But number one, to be a child of God, you have to repent of your sins. And no mention of sin is here. He does mention it occasionally. This one, he didn't. No. You know what I say to that? <laughs> Jesus, I pray for those that are listening and watching me now. I pray, Father, that you would literally manifest yourself to them, make yourself... Literally manifest yourself to them. What does that mean? It doesn't mean literally. Because mm -mm. again, the actual presence of God, the glory of God... When the manifestation is there... It, it, it would overwhelm you with tremendous, awesome fear, 
it would overpower you. It would be more than you could take. You'd die. You would die. Mm -hmm. Actually, that's what that's what Moses. Mm -hmm. When God finally appeared, he had to do it in a way that he didn't show all of them mm -hmm. because it was too much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, um, remember we saw Matthew Ward. Mm -hmm. Do you remember he sang the song about we want to we want to see you, God? One of the popular songs back in the nineties. Mm -mm. And he jokingly said, of course, if we did see you, we would all die. Mm -mm. Yeah, he actually said that. Matthew Ward is from the group Second Chapter of Acts. Yeah. They were, I think, a brother and sister. Yes, old hippies, mm. remember. <laughs> oh, for real to them. But if they don't know you, just ask Yeshua, ask the Messiah into your heart. Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I repent of all sin. I repent of all sin. I hmm? declare. I declare. That you died for me. That you died for me. And I ask that you wash me. And I ask that you wash me. And cleanse me. And cleanse me. And make me new. And make me new. I receive you into my life right now. I receive you into my life right now. Now pray this. Say, Father. Father. I thank you. I thank you. That my heart is prepared. And my heart's prepared. And my life is open. And my life is open. To the manifestation. To the manifestation. Of your glory. Of your glory. Right now. Right now. Let there be an explosion. Let there be an explosion. Of miracles. Of miracles. In my life. In my life. And through my life. And through my life. In Yeshua's name. In Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so according to the actual words that he said, mm -hmm. words mean something. Mm -hmm. There's a whole group of people. He promised all these people. And everybody within the sound of his voice, uh, a whole bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. All these people could literally have an hour segment on this show now because it's been uh, just under two years. Mm -hmm. And how much you want to bet all these people are in the same exact spot they were when this show happened and all these claims were made. And that's not me not having faith in God. Or being so skeptical and cynical. No, it's because these people mishandle God's word over and over again. Mm -hmm. And they get the gospel incredibly wrong. Right. Even that little prayer at the end there, it was like a tag on. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, the forgiveness of sin thing. We should throw that in there because that's important. But really what's important <laughs> is more mm -hmm. and provision and money and Skittles and all this other and stuff. And that brings you down a whole other bunny trail yes. that leads you away from Christ and the true gospel. Exactly. Hey. The dog? Yeah, we're getting near the end. The end is near, folks. Hang on. Hang on. I'll get her. You hear her snoring, but she's not really. Yeah, where is she? Right here. Okay, let's see where it goes. Tina, there is so much presence of yes. God yes. all yes. over the set, oh, yeah. all over the congregation, oh, yeah. all over uh, the people at home right now, uh, that if I want you to flow Something's all over here, but it's not the glory of God. Right now, in Jesus' name, in the name of your son, Yeshua, you are the miracle worker. So we welcome the miracle worker right now to come and do miracles. Somebody's eyes opening, even right here in this place. Somebody with arthritis is being healed. Somebody with fibromyalgia is being healed. I release healing of anxiety and depression in the name of Jesus. I declare that someone that needs a financial miracle, heaven is invading your finances right now. Is there she goes. Right now. That's in terrible. In the name of Yeshua. Is that, is that ridiculous? Is that ridiculous? Is that unquantifiable? Is that unquantifiable? Is that unquantifiable? What about the Skittles? What about the Skittles? The Skittles. It's bad. It's bad. The Skittles? What do you think about the Skittles? What do you think? What do you think? Is it is it heretical? Are we not doing the... Is he not preaching the, the, the good news of Jesus? All right. All right. One more. We need to get one more howl out of her. <laughs> well, she's giving it all she's got, folks. Yeah. Maybe when she's getting better, she'll be a little more spunky. You did good. You, you did, did really, really good. good. Yes. Yes. You picked him out again. You couldn't even sit on my lap the whole time. <laughs> No, you couldn't. Hey, everybody. Thanks so much for all of your uh, support and for watching. And remember that we do have um, a whole website with tons of information. We have playlists on yes. this channel with tons of information, not just our videos, but lots of other videos and a lot of topics that a lot of you are really trying to learn things and about. And asking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We also have recommended channels that we recommend. Yes. That's why they're there. Right. Lots and lots of good stuff. And we also have uh, extra videos that we make for our own Patreon page. Mm -hmm and or AGTV. for AGTV. Mm -hmm. And I actually have one of my American Gospel t-shirts on. Here it is. But it's winter and I didn't want to just wear a t-shirt. No, it gets cold. This is really cool. 
What does it say? It's about, it's a way to try to graphically, I think Brandon must have designed this. He's really good at this stuff. Do what you have to do. Law and Gospel is one of the interpretive grids that we can place on scripture. And it's been super helpful for, for us because mm -hmm. the, the law convicts us of our sin, which mm -hmm. it should. And it also teaches us how to live. But the primary thing it does is it says you are not living up to the and law. And you never will because that's the Ten Commandments. That's right. God's holy law. And that's when the gospel comes in and says done. And this says do. <laughs> this says done. So if you, And it has the cross because that's what Jesus did yes. for us. He lived out the whole um, law perfectly on our behalf. So if this is uh, helpful to you, we're really glad because, yes. you know, we do make fun of stuff and we do have some silliness to our and show. And our popcorn. Yeah. but, but I could I, have held back, but I didn't. Sorry. You could have, but you didn't. I didn't. She has no control. No. Actually, you good. know what? We didn't have any chocolate for this episode, so we're Couldn't doing good. Couldn't do chocolate. Hey, you guys, thanks so much for watching. <laughs> we're done. We're out of here. Talk to you again soon. Bye-bye. It was literally raining Skittles candy out of the sky. God said to him, this represents ridiculous favor and miraculous provision that I, God, wants to pour out upon you. Basta! Yeah. Oh. I'm